In this video, I'm going to show you how to plan a website design step by step from the prototype to actually implementing the design, whether you create a five pages website or a 50 pages website. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the digital alchemist. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to plan a website design. As website creators, we often like to dive straight into the design, but that's often a mistake. So I'm just going to show you my process that I've seen works with small websites and also with larger websites. So ready? Let's dive in. Prerequisites. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your website structure. Now, lucky for you, one of the most popular videos on the channel is precisely that how to structure websites. So make sure you go watch that video so that you have a solid foundation. Now, just to let you know, this is the same technique whether you create a five pages website or a 50 pages website. It's just the same idea, but I'm going to show you the simple way. Just bear that in mind. So for this project, I created just five pages. So home, who are we, uh, or it could be named about us our services, testimonials, and get a quote. I'm just going to focus on the homepage, but just to show you uh, the structure that we need. First, creating a prototype. So the next part is the prototyping part. So for that, you can use tools like Sketch. You could be using Figma. Um, you can use Photoshop. You can use the GIMP. If money is an issue, the GIMP is completely free. Or if you want something um, alternate, you want an alternative to the game bar Photoshop that costs way less than the Adobe suite, you could use Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. Now, you could also use Wire Mentor, which allows you to create wireframes and prototypes directly with Elementor. Now, shameless plug, disclaimer, uh, I created Wire Mentor. And since I created it, I'm going to be using it in this video, but feel free to use anything you want. You could use even use paper if you want it, although I think it's better to uh, do stuff on the computer. Now, once you've done that, you want to actually start creating your prototype. So like I said, in my case, I'm using Elementor. So as you can see here, just going to show you the homepage. I have the hero section that you see right here. So just the title, a couple of buttons that move into the intro where I just want some text that's going to be uh, important for SEO. Uh, just have some text and then a, a toggle here with some, some questions. Next, I have my USP section. So what, what is a USP? USP is a unique selling proposition. So basically just one or two words for each USP to say why should people trust that company? What makes a difference? Then I have a testimonials section right here that should link to another page with all the testimonials. And then I have my call to action banner. So simple um, homepage, but that really works. I tried it time and time again with many clients. Simple, but it works. OK, so if we look at the page outside of Elementor, that's what it looks like. It's really bare bones. It's just a prototype. It's a wireframe. It's not supposed to look nice. Next, creating a mood board. Why do we need that? So let me show you. First, I go to Google and I just typed web design inspiration. And then you're going to land on some websites like web design inspiration that you can see right here. Uh, Site Inspire. And awards, which is one of the most famous ones and one I often refer to. So what I'll do basically, uh, depending on how much you paid for the project, I would spend uh, a finite amount of time watching for nice designs. Then I'm going to, I'm going to open a lot of different websites. And eventually, I'm just going to handpick a few ones that I really like. So uh, what I do then, I make screenshots of all those websites. So I have this one that I liked. Then I got this one, this one too, this one, this one here. It's got a video, but I just like how clean it was. Like this one, this one. This one is really minimal, which is something I love. And finally, I got this one. Now, of course, I would also watch for the mobile and tablet versions, but I've already done that and I don't want to uh, keep that video too long, but you get the idea. So once I've done that, and I've taken screenshots of all of these websites. 
the next step is to go into an editor. I'm using Affinity Designer here, but once again, feel free to use any tool you prefer. And once again, if money is an issue, you can use the GIMP. So I'm using Affinity Designer and what I started doing, so I created um, a project here. And I'm gonna start dragging and dropping screenshots here. And then I'm just going to resize the elements. So I'm gonna to try to put a few, I mean, all of those screenshots in uh, different artboards. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to show you the final result. So what I did, I put each screenshot and then I referenced why I liked this one. So for the first one, I like the fact that it's a dark theme. I like the contrast of the colors. The second one here, I like that it's clean and minimal. For this one, I like the central nav here with the logo on the left and then some elements on the right although i wouldn't be using the social icons for this project but i like the way the navigation is laid out now for this one here i like the fact that it looks so so clean now this one here is really key because what i really like is the edge and i like also the little notch at the at the bottom here so i thought this would really be a key element for the home page for example now for these ones here, uh, for the top one, I like the dark uh, theme and the large, large shapes, large shapes, sorry, in the background. And here at the bottom, I liked, well, you can't really see it. Uh, I can move it around, but there's an edge uh, around the image, a little bit like this one here. So once again, um, this could be a theme for our design. Now for the last one, I like the fact that it's so, so clean. So basically what a mood board does, it just gives you an impression of what you're trying to achieve. I can't really say it's this, this or that, just some elements that I like. And I'm going to refer to this mood board visually when comes the design phase. Next, implementing the mood board into your design. So now is the time to actually implement the styles and the design for a website. So the first thing you should do is implement the um, identity from your client. Now, some clients already have their identity done, or maybe you're the one doing it. But at this stage, you should implement the colors, the fonts, the logo, and just make sure that you get everything at hand so that when you need to actually start designing, you don't start thinking, okay, which color am, am I going to be using here to use a contrast? Which font am I going to use? This should be already defined. Now, once again, I've already covered that in a few videos. And even better than that, I created a brand guidelines template that you can download on my website completely free of charge. That's going to help you to create a killer brand identity for you or your client. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, I'll put the link in the description below, or you can go straight to casino.com forward slash branding. Okay, so that being said, once you have your style guide and everything um, looking good, it's time to start designing. So that's precisely what I did here. So I'm within Elementor, and I just started styling uh, all the all the sections so let me show you might be a bit choppy because i'm recording in 24 frames per second 25 actually but you get the id now let me show you um what the prototype was like so we have our navigation here then we have our hero section and if i move here you can see we have the navigation we have our headline and you can see that i, I put the edge just around uh, the picture like we saw in the mood board. So if I go back to the mood board, this one of the key um, elements that I wanted to use in the design. And let me go back to the top. That's what you see here around the, uh, the edges. So basically for each part, I've tried to use some of the things I put in the mood board. Let me show you one more. Okay, you see the big L shape here in the background? Well, the ID came from the big shapes here. So as you can see, mood boarding and using that technique is not about stealing people's design and stealing people's ID. It's about getting a feel for what you're trying to achieve. And here, I really like the big shapes in the background. So that translated into this, which is completely different 
but it helped creating a design. And I hope you find it's a nice design. But my client definitely thought it was nice because, yes, this comes from a real project. I changed the logos and um, the name and everything and put just fake content. But this comes from a real project. So once again, let's move on to the next part. So here we have our text part with the questions. That's the way I styled it here. Then we have our USB section. And you can see how it was made here with some little subtle parallax in the background. Then we have our testimonial section. And that's where I got creative also. Still with the L-shaped background in the back. And you can see it's completely different than what we had here in the prototype. But then again, the prototype's um, role is not to show a nice design, just to show the layout and the, the elements. Next, we have our call to action banner. And that's what we have here at the bottom. Okay, and if we move to the mobile version, as you can see, we have here our navigation. We have our hero section. Now let me show you here how it looks. You can still see that edge around the, um, the main hero section, which I think worked well. There's the little notch at the bottom um, it's not rounded like in the original design, but once again, the idea is not to copy. Uh, I just like the notch and made it a bit different. Next, we have our text section. So I'm just going to go through the page, show you how it looks on the mobile. And there you go. So I'm not going to go through all the pages because the video will take way too long. And the idea here is to really give you the process and the workflow that I'm using, whether I work on a five pages website or a 100 pages website. Now, one thing I should mention is that when you come to the design phase, if it's a large website, what I would usually do is create masters. And what I call masters is I would create a master visual for the homepage. I create a master one for secondary page. And for example, I would create a master for the contact page or for the product pages. So that way, it's way easier. You just validate the masters before you create a website. And when your client validates the master, then you're free to create all the pages in the rest of the website. So I hope that you got value out of this. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps growing the channel. It's only going to take you one second, even less than that. And that's going to help the channel so much. Now, if you want more videos about web design, about freelancing and about all the tools that you need to thrive as a professional, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.